Today on Keep Shooting Monday, let's talk about what makes a great photograph. Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 18. Uh, this week's photo assignment is on weather. Now that could be good or bad weather, does not matter. Bad weather means snow or hail or rain or storms or clouds. Good weather could also mean nice blue skies. So it doesn't matter, you can post it over to the forum. All of the rules and everything are over there on the forum. So head over to Cazillo.com slash forum and you will be able to see that and post those just sign up post and i might choose yours as the winners this week in photography news one of my lightroom actually two of my lightroom five requests from this video were brought true this week by tom hogarty in an interview he talked about lightroom for the ipad he actually showed a very very preview build of lightroom on the iPad, which is very interesting. Um, go ahead, check it out. Here's the video. It's it's interesting. There's some things that are that are very new. He really only showed the editing or the develop module, quote unquote. He really didn't talk about anything else there. But I thought it was um, good that they're going that direction. And one of the other hosts also made a mention of it syncing back to the original Lightroom catalog, which is definitely a requirement. So I hope that they bring that to fruition also. Um, something else he mentioned is the possibility of other book manufacturers or book companies besides Blurb, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I have to say I haven't really tried them 100%, but I don't know, I'm just, just, I haven't heard good things, let's put it that way. So that's another cool thing that they're gonna do, I hope anyway, that they're at least looking at the possibility of some additional companies that are gonna be out there and uh, printing books because not everybody wants to use Blurb. Maybe they want to use their current lab, which they know and trust, like me, and that's the way that I, pr I prefer to go. Uh, Nikon published a recommended set of lenses for the D800E, which is a um, special camera without the anti-aliasing filter, and so that means that you need a much better quality lens in order to produce a good image. Basically what this means is this is the list of their top of the line lenses right now. So if you want a list of all of their best lenses that they are putting out, these are the ones, this is the definitive list of their top of the line lenses that you should be considering buying if that is what you're looking for. Uh, Canon also released their uh, 1.21 firmware version for the 5D Mark III, which the number one option is the uh, HDMI uncompressed output, which uh, unfortunately Nikon has had for a while, or I should say fortunately has had for a while, but I'm glad to see Canon is catching up in that respect. Competition is always good, and glad to see that they have some more of that stuff out there. What about when the sun is so harsh and the client cannot even open her eyes? What do you do? This question was in reference, I'm sure, to the seeing the light video, which is where this comment came from. So the obvious answer to that is get them out of the sun. Get the sun out of their face. So put them in shadow, uh, whether it's from a tree or from a building, or put their face in shadow by putting the sun behind them, which is my preferred method of posing and setting up and doing a lot of my portraits anyway, because I get a nice hair light, maybe I put a little uh, fill flash in their face. Um, it's my preferred method of shooting. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Just get them out of the sun. You got to go to a different area, different time of day, uh, different location, different angle. They can't open their eyes. It's probably not going to make a great portrait unless you're doing it fun and just putting sunglasses on them. And so that could work too. But um, yeah, you just got to move around. Do you use custom picture style for your backgrounds? The colors stand out very well with the blur. No, I do not use any of the custom picture styles. I think they're a waste of time. I don't want to be editing and looking at photos on this tiny little three inch screen on the back of my camera. I would much rather be editing on my big, beautiful 24 inch monitor. P 
picking out my colors, setting them how I want them to set them. And so that is the way that I go. Uh, like that color calibration so that I can know that my colors are accurate so that it's going to make sure that on any other device, at least I have a known good original source, which is the way that it should be. And then on everyone else's, their monitor might be off, but I know that originally mine's calibrated so that it's going to look the best on the majority of other monitors. And so, yeah, I don't use picture styles, maybe just a touch of sharpening, just so that I can tell if a photo is sharp in the camera, in the back of the camera, but that's it. Other than that, nope, I just edit everything in Lightroom and get them how I like them. There are three parts to a good photograph or even a great photograph. Always these three, it always comes down to these three main parts, light, composition, and exposure. So number one, let's talk about light. Without light, we would not be able to create any photographs at all. That light could be natural, like we have outdoors, or it could be man-made, like we are looking at right now in this video. Uh, these are actually a softbox, an umbrella, two lights on the background. And so it's unnatural light, it's artificial light, something that we man-made have, have created. We obviously didn't create the sun, so that's why it's regular light. I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> with that anyway. Um, so the biggest thing is being able to see that light. Just pointing and clicking does not make a good photograph. You have to be able to take the time to be able to see the light and recognize when something makes a good photograph. Uh, this past Thursday, I actually went to uh, Antonelli Institute, which I'm a graduate of, and judged their print competition, which there were some amazing photographs there. Um, just, uh, just some of the stuff was just really, really, really cool. And uh, if there's a link to some of those photos, I'll put it up here for you to look at. Hopefully they have them up on the web already. Anyway, the the, the, a lot of the photographs that were there, you could tell that the students had a grasp of the light and the timing and the, you know, the, the, everything about it. Just, you know, light is more than just, um, seeing it and then being able to capture it. It's a matter of feeling it. Sometimes you need to create it. Sometimes you need to add some, sometimes you need to take some away. Sometimes you need to wait another five minutes. So um, a lot of that is kind of internal and, and uh, experience based. Uh, but if you can't see the light and the shadow in a photograph or even on my face right now, if you can't just like that, be able to see which way the, which the light direction is, which way is the main light versus the background light versus the, the fill light, then you should spend some more time studying photographs and learning and developing your eye so that you get to be a better photographer. The second thing that makes a great photograph is the composition. What's going on in the image? Uh, is the person posed correctly? Do they have a good smile on their face? Uh, is, it, um, you know, is, it, is it using one of the rules of composition? Is it intentionally breaking the rules of composition because it's going to be a make it a better photograph? So again, those there are all things that you need to get with time and understand with time, but it's also, you also learn that by studying photographs that are out there, finding out what you like, what you don't like. I actually have a video that I put up not that long ago that gives you ways to develop your photographic style. I think it was seven or eight different ways to develop your photographic style. So head over, check out this video. It's an excellent one and a lot, has a lot, again, this is, this is all about composition, time of day, um, the, the location, high, low, rule thirds, no rule thirds, frame in a frame, you know, all these things are good rules of composition, but um, you just need to be able to look at it and see it and it's just one of those innate things that maybe not everybody has, but in order to get that and make that great photograph, you need to have it and you need to develop it and work on it. And I think it is something that you can develop within yourself. You know, not everyone is a great photographer right off the bat, but um, you know, I, I could probably learn to paint, but I'm sure I wouldn't be, you know, a Michelangelo or one of those other guys that are really good painters. I'm not very good with history. Uh, so anyway, I don't think I could learn to do that. I could probably, you know, paint a house or a building or a tree or something like that if I really had to. If I took a couple of classes, but I wouldn't be, I would never consider myself to be a great painter. Um, 
whereas I know that I'm proficient with my photography and I consider myself to be an accomplished photographer and uh, I can see an image before I shoot it, whether it's a product, whether it's a portrait, whether it's a scenic or a landscape, and be able to picture that image with its composition, with the light in there, as Ansel Adams says in this quote, is the way to go. The third piece of the puzzle to creating great photographs is exposure. You could have excellent composition, you could have amazing light, but if you cannot get this last piece of the puzzle right, then you have wasted your time, you have wasted your talents, you have wasted everything. So you need to know the tool that you are using to capture those things, and that's your camera. That also goes for the lens choice. You need to make sure that you're choosing the right lens for what you want to create. And so um, knowing what it's going to do, how it's going to react, uh, make sure that you understand 100% the depth of field scale and how that relates to say a 70 to 200 lens versus a 24 to 70 versus a 50 versus a 14 to 24 versus a 300 millimeter lens. And so it's going to change. It's going to be different on each one of those lenses. And you know, shutter speed and your basics, your basic technical things, you need to make sure that you understand those and know those well. You're probably going to be getting lucky here and there. You're probably going to be creating like, wow, wow, I created that one great image and here's another really good one and this one's awesome too. But to be able to be consistent, you need to be able to put all three of these parts together through the light, through the composition, and especially in the exposure. Because, you know, again, you could create an awesome image, but then it's two, three, four stops underexposed. It's probably junk. Or if it's out of focus and you don't know the technical stuff in the camera and you're not focusing correctly, it's probably junk. So um, put it together. Spend some time. If you really want to get better, you need to know your equipment well. That's either reading your camera manual. Um, great example is uh, I'm actually really uh, good with my camera and I know exactly where my buttons are. After so many years of using these same bodies and the pro bodies year after year after year and photo shoot after photo shoot, it's, I just have a muscle memory of exactly where the buttons are and I don't even have to think about it hardly anymore. And so that's where you need to get to be in, in order to allow your mind to open up and see more of the light and uh, see your better composition and be able to work with the model better. If you're fumfering around, is that a word? I don't even know. If, kind of, if you're messing around with your camera or your flash or your uh, whatever equipment, you're not going to be able to concentrate on what you really need to concentrate on whether that's the light that's out there in front of you or the portraits in front of you or the child that's running around or maybe you miss the shot because of uh, focus issues or you, know, you try and fix a photo in Photoshop because it's a little out of focus. Um, you know, it, it all comes down to spending the time, learning to do it right, and um, it's all really experience. So keep shooting, keep trying. I promise you will keep on getting better. Uh, keep watching my videos. Of course, that's a good source of information. And hopefully, I'm um, also a good source of inspiration for you. That's my other goal, not only with the, with the videos to put out information, but also to, to uh, you know, be an inspiration and give you kind of a reason to keep going and keep pushing you. And um, I've kind of pushed myself. I've had people that I felt that were pushing me and expecting... Uh, I don't want to say greatness, but um, you know, expecting good things from me, and uh, I think those people already know who they are in my life. So, uh, you know, they've done a lot for me, and it's you know, hopefully, I can do a little bit for you, even though I don't know you guys, but I love you, I swear. So, uh, yeah, keep shooting, guys, and uh, you can do it. Greg Kazillo, Kazillo.com. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting.